Hello and welcome to the Business Octopus, where we talk about all things sales, marketing and technology. Uh, today, I am joined with Peter Marshall, uh, who is a digital transformation consultant, here to talk about the digital business environment or about change in the digital business environment. I'm Avon Collis, CRM and marketing automation specialist at Relevate and all around good guy. Welcome, Peter. How are you going? Good, thanks. Thank you for having me. No worries. Thank you for coming along. Now, uh, we, as we were discussing earlier, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of change, um, and I guess sort of encapsulate what's happening in the business environment. Can you talk us through what are some of those changes? Yes. Well, we're certainly on that fourth rev revolution in regard to digital transformation. And one of the biggest changes I've seen of recent time in the last couple of years and, and accelerating as we go through and during COVID is... We're moving from a process where technology used to support the way we did business and the way we do our tasks and the way we managed our, our day. Moving forward, um, I'm finding that technology is actually replacing some of that and we're moving into the AI re artificial intelligence revelation. We're moving towards more automation and technology is actually starting to really support us and become our partners in business. So for me, it's all about e-commerce it's all about automation it's all about ai and it's all about our data becoming an asset i think too like the, at the moment the, the the speed at which all of that is 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 moving is accelerated through you know low code or no code options or uh perhaps you know click and drag functionality now the average person has the ability to you know build forms build sites build this without having to be too technical in the back end and now with this sort of, sort of like leveraged code as well, where um, people can now create things uh, that are a bit more complex uh, with fewer lines or, or less changes. And then you've got things like um, uh, systems and structures that are kind of allow continuous updates and continuous changes at a much, much faster rate. So now we're iterating all of the things that we've got much faster as well. So I guess what are some of the, the technologies themselves that have um, that are driving this? So there's lots of different technologies. There's your CRM solutions. There's the automation. There's the Azure. There's the Microsoft products. Um, there's there's lots of different technologies. But in terms of the no code and in terms of forms, in terms of our web becoming digital doing our whole business online and through the web, which um, everybody's had to learn through COVID, but now maturing that. So you can actually scale and, and do a lot more, um, spend a lot more time doing the things you really want to do, the high value tasks rather than all the admin. So the technology has come in place to, to help us um, do that. And it all starts and ends with your data, in my opinion. You can have all the greatest technologies, and yes, um, they're becoming modern, they're becoming no code, but most of our clients out there are still struggling to mature and modernize in terms of um, trying to get there. So from an org change and a, and a digital transformation process, it's really, really important that we help them grasp and understand the knowledge and, and teach them to be open to the new technologies that are coming and, and how they can embed them, how they can learn them, how they can get the best out of them. But it all starts and ends with your data and then the technology comes in. If you can actually see your data as an asset and, and the second biggest asset to the services you're providing or, or whatever your business is, um, data will help you uh, transform and keep up and digitally disrupt for the next 10 years. If you've got dirty data and you don't care about it and your people don't care about it, you really are going to get left behind. And, and that's, that's what we say today is different tomorrow, but data is data and it's going to be important from here on in. I think too that once upon a time, you know, people were very much constrained, like the humble text message was, you know, constrained by the number of characters that you could have, you couldn't do images, you had to keep it very, you know, uh, basic, just to get it over the waves, but then people got creative with, you know, the different sorts of symbols and things to make little patterns or whatever on the screen. Uh, but now we're far less constrained by that, you know, we've got uh, supercomputers that can process more, uh, internet that can transfer more, and you know hard drives that can store more and then you've got a higher collection rate because we're just generating more data points like you know smart watches that people wear are now picking up the movement the speed the geolocation and sending that back somewhere um you know your your washing machine can be plugged into the internet and potentially tell you when it needs a new part 
um, all of the, the internet of things. And I think people really don't understand the scale of it, particularly like now you've got fridges that can order your groceries online. You've got, um, you know, uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, wearables that can tell you when you've got enough uh, calories in your system and then can trigger other things in weight loss apps or whatever. And when people sort of understand what can be collected and the fact that, you know, now we don't have to give someone a 20 page questionnaire, we can inference and understand information by maybe using hidden fields or extra information based on where the data was collected, how it was collected, uh, the type of uh, environment that that person was engaging in in order to prov uh, provide that data to you. Um, that can all have a lot of power in, in being able to say, all right, well, more people fill out line, uh, forms on websites than they do in person on iPads. So then you change the investment. Or if you want them to fill out on iPads, then you change the investment that way. So, um, you know, <laughs> there is a hell of a lot more data and, and a big move to e-commerce as well. So um, I guess with so much data and, and yes, um, it's easy to collect. Um, what are the impact on, on businesses and business owners? So the impact on having good data and, and being able to manage that data is, is obviously there's a lot of rules coming in around what we can and can't do with the data we collect in terms of keeping it private, meeting all our data governance um, issues around that. So that's the first and forefront, which every mission that we talk about or we implement or lead in will always meet those guidelines. But in, in regards to the data, what it allows you to do is um, recently there was a client that I was working in the legal industry and they were bringing a brand new a CRM solution in. As part of that solution, um, they had a lot of data entry people who um, were pretty much filling in forms for the memberships and things to do with the legal industry and the regulation requirements and things like that to get your accreditation to be a lawyer and all of those sort of things. So, so what they did from a CRM perspective is we actually moved the data to a digital um, online form where the client could self-serve and input their information each year to update or renew or provoke, do all their changes online, which most clients like to do because lawyers are busy during the day, 24-7 in court and all those. So being able to do that in their own time was a great idea. What we would do with the back-end staff, though, in terms of data entry, we would put them into those higher-value jobs where they become more about regulating the quality of the data, making sure that the rules were being met, and less about the data entry. So, so there's always those opportunities to get return on investment and, and get your people back to the value add customer staff or important staff rather than the admin tasks. And when you have good data coming into your system and you, you can do all of those automations to help your life become a lot easier and then transform your business and your FTE to, to more high value jobs because the automation is never going to replace some of those things that we need to do in terms of customer relationships relationships, in terms of making decisions, in terms of lots of other things, as much as some of our geniuses would like to think they can, it never will, in my opinion. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that, um, you know, I had a discussion with a, um, a business owner the other day, and they said, why, why would I pay X amount a month per, for a license when I can get someone at $20 per hour um, to come in and, and just do the data entry? Like, well, Yes, you might pay, you know, even if it's an expensive platform that automates a lot, that's a couple of hundred dollars a month, um, you're probably paying a few thousand dollars a month for the employee to be less efficient. And, you know, the, the amount of data entry we were talking about was several hundred kilos of paperwork in this office space that is actually needed to be processed. So, yeah, we can put on 20 staff at, um, you know, maybe a million dollars a year in salary potentially, uh, even if half a million dollars in salary. Um, or you can put on some software and it'll be five or 10 grand a year. You know, yes, there's a cost to it, but it's a, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And particularly when you're talking in volumes. Um, so what about uh, uh, data as an asset? Like how do people quantify that? So for me, data as an asset is, there's, data means so many things. Data helps you report back to your regulators and compliance if you're in that sort of an industry. Data helps you put a service model on your um, solutions to make sure you're um, getting back to your customers in a timely manner when they have inquiries or when they place orders, making sure you can automate a service model on top of that data and, and keep that customer engagement happening um, just through your data. 
Um, your data allows you to report analytics. Um, Power BI is a big thing in the reporting analytics, and it's very exciting. I'm working with some clients on that at the moment in, in a big data world. And it's just amazing what you can do in your reporting and your enterprise analytics and drilling down through your data to look at what are your business problems for today and, oh, I better go down and have a look at that or look what's spiking here, there's an opportunity to grow our business here because we seem to be having a gap. Data allows you to do so many things at your fingertips. Um, and, and if you get some really good reports built and dashboards that are easy to use and easy to read and you understand your data, you will, you will um, lead, out lead everybody and you will digitally disrupt out in the real world because it's amazing what these reports and data can do. Data allows you to automate, it allows you to meet your compliance and regulatory, it allows you to um, get effective reports, it allows you to report on your performance to your clients, it allows you to put a service model in. It just goes on and on and on. But what I want to do is make sure we don't scare people away because it is a journey, it is a transformation. And um, there's a lot of technology out there and a lot of people hungry to get you on board. And from a digital transformation perspective, it's I work with the customers and the people to make sure you get onboarded and you stay up to speed with it. You don't just get handed the product and said, here's, here's your guides, here's how it goes, see you later, everybody. I want to help you and your people embrace it, adopt it, partner with it. That's what digital transformation is because once they become open and not threatened by technology, they will embrace it, they will partner with it, and they will take you to places that you never thought you could go. Yeah, and I think that, um, you know, you, you're talking about, you know, having the, the, the finger on the pulse and really understanding everything that's going on. And I know that, you know, there's one uh, platform that we're working with and partnering on where, uh, you know, once upon a time or, or most businesses probably have their financial data is like 30 days old or something like that. So, you know, the sales from the first day are only just coming through after the end month close plus a few days for the administration and then for that report to get back to the business owner. Um, but with some, you know, financial systems, you could do daily closes that also take into consideration all your, you know, your uh, accruals and reversals, if you know anything about accounting. And, uh, and so the, you get a finger on the pulse of, all right, we're a bit short this month, let's bump up the sales calls. And then, oh, all right, we're over this month, let's slow down on the sales calls and let's try and automate some of the uh, thing or hire up or, or do whatever you have to do to, 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 to keep that equilibrium. And from the um, from the, the the management side of being able to to use the data, I think it's really important just to understand what are the kinds of questions, and they're actually quite normal questions. I think people data can, well, even the word data can probably make some people's eyes glaze over. And so it just might be, do I need to hire this month? Do I need to uh, put some cash aside? Do I need to like for for example, if I want to report a certain thing, maybe I'm going to go for a tender. Uh, and we do this, we, we keep a, um, you know, an FTE uh, level. So it's just a, a decimal. So um, if someone's a full-time, they're a, a one. If they're a half-time, they're a 0.5. But we, that rolls up to a single number at the end. And when someone asks the question, how many FTE staff do you have? I don't have to think. Within 30 seconds, I can get the report. I can see that dashboard. I hit refresh. I get the latest and greatest version even if it was changed to 30 seconds prior. Um, and it will be, you know, whatever the number is for the report. Maybe it's like, what percentage of your organisation um, is female? There's a common question of like, another one might be, how many Aboriginal Torres Strait Islanders do you, do you hire? You can answer those questions if you collect the data, you run the report and you have the dashboard. So definitely, I think, you know, from a CRM perspective, um, that's the kind of questions that we want to be able to ask is, you know, when was the last, how often do you reach out to your customers? How many sales activities were completed today? Um, you know, all of these things that should be collected automatically from business as usual, rather than, you know, that extra administrative effort to try and try and collect that data. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the key things that I liked about what you said that then was around making um, data driven decisions. So, Historically, we would do a gut feel, we would go with the gut feel and we we're okay and we could get out there and we didn't need any data or stats or anything. Today, we use our gut feel to give us an idea. We look at our data to tell us what those issues, problems, concerns or growth opportunities or um, 
or whatever in the data to help us decide and keep up with the business, keep up with what's happening in our market, keep up with what um, our opportunities are. So uh, that data decision making, data driven decision making is is why your asset becomes a data. And, and it's tough for some organisations who have made it on gut feel and become very wealthy and trying to uh, come into the digital world. It, it's very, very scary. So it's we understand that. And from a transformation perspective, we want to bring you on the journey and, and help you learn, guide you, help you let go of your old operating models, bring in the digital way of working so you can digitally disrupt like some of your competitors are doing that today. And, and also not having to work so hard, work smarter. So, so you're not working the 18 hour days, you have that quality life with your family after hours and on the weekends because you've got your digital platform helping you do your business better. So what does it mean for the future in terms of, you know, business, industry, uh, jobs? What's next? So I think the biggest thing for me is that we we need to be open to change and technology. And um, the biggest transformation thing I try to tell my clients is don't be scared of technology. Partner with it. Treat it like another FTE because it's going to do a lot of basic administration boring tasks that no one else wants to do anyway. And, and there's high error rates and there's lots of other things. Um, and, and help those people move out of those roles into the more of the high value add type um, responsibilities that you need in your organisation. And, and, and what the opportunity is, is rather than having to bring new staff on every two weeks if you're growing or every two months or every two years, you can use the same FTE and continue to grow that FTE and get your digital platform, your digital partner, your technology to help you scale up and run those tasks through. And that's the exciting part about it. Um, in terms of business and jobs today and where we're at, we actually need our businesses to, um, a lot of uh, clients I talk to, they wanna go straight to Nirvana, but it's you can't go there. You, you haven't got the 100,000 to spend on it. You can't go there immediately in a lot of cases. You'll, you need to bring your people, your customers, your contractors, anyone who you deal with from a data perspective on that journey. And you need to bring them on that journey so they can embrace it and use it and do a quality job and nurture your data and understand why they're doing things online and, and the importance of it. And it also allows them to become efficient. So I think in the next five to 10 years, um, technology is going to smash us to death. It already has. COVID has opened the door for everybody. I actually am um, excited about helping organisations become digital and, and helping your people get on the journey and learn to partner with those technologies, letting go of the old way of operating, um, looking forward to the new way of operating. And, um, yeah, I think that most, most organisations, um, you know, will be very excited once they start that journey if they haven't already. I think um, sometimes people think of it just as a pure cost saving or cost measure of some kind. But, you know, there was a, a company that implemented a system uh, and went fully digital and they basically were able to double their uh, ability to uh, handle calls and no increase in headcount. Now, that's more of a cost so, uh, set aside, but ideally you want your, your revenue growth to be uh, to outpace your headcount growth because, as you grow a headcount, you know, for every six, 10 people, you need to have a manager and then they need a manager and then they need a manager. And so uh, as that scale grows, so too does the cost and the expense because those managers cost more than the base frontline employees. So if you can consider, you know, how you can outpace your revenue growth to your, your headcount growth, then you're always going to be ahead. You're always going to, you're going to have more profitability. There's um, better customer service, you know, managed by the numbers, statistical management, is, you know, like we said, that those data-driven decisions, that evidence-based improvement. Uh, and there's businesses that improve productivity by 40%. They, you know, reduce other costs by, you know, equally large numbers. And, you know, if for those that aren't taking on those, those little changes, they're very, very quickly going to be uh, irrelevant or not scalable or surpassed by, you know, the other person who's doing the same, who's going to get market share. So, you know, I, th I think um, it, it's, it's a bit of a no-brainer. Uh, and if you're not doing it, now is the time. Otherwise, you're going to be very, very small or gone. <laughs> the digital disruption will capture you. And we just look at the history of Kodak. We look at the history of BlackBerry. We look at the history of lots of um, businesses that just didn't want to change their mindset. 
I encourage everybody to be open and partner with your technology. Start to learn about the technology. You don't need to know it all. There are so many people out there, so many partners, so many organisations there to help you get on the journey and support you. You don't have to know it all. The low code's coming in and, and it's simple in some ways for even me who's non-technical to, to get involved and help me automate some of my tasks. But, you know, be open to it because... The more you resist the technology and the digital disruption, the more dangerous it is that you'll get left behind. And, and the disruption is not a negative word. It, it means that they're digitalizing their world. They're moving forward. They're really, really um, enabling themselves, partnering with their digital technologies and platforms. It's a positive word that you want, to, you want your business disrupted with. I think um, a good analogy might be, the uh, oddly enough, the New Zealand SAS have an exercise called the rabbit and the wolf where they take the fastest runner from the regiment and they run. All the new recruits have to chase or beat them. And then they have the slowest person in the regiment run behind. And if the slowest person passes you, that's it. You're gone. You're out. So you need to be ahead of the wolf. <laughs> and ideally, you're ahead of the rabbit. So, uh, if, yeah, if you're not, if you're not keeping up, you'll you're get eaten. <laughs> Absolutely. Be open and um, don't be scared of it and partner with it and learn as much as you can as quickly as possible because it's coming um, and it's coming hard and fast. The artificial intelligence, I, I think George Jetson and the Jetsons um, is coming. I, I show my age now <laughs> for all the people that don't know, but being able to actually, you know, transform your world completely digitally, which is what that... Um, cartoon was about many many years ago we we are getting there and the next 10 years will be mostly there so so embrace it be open to it um don't be scared is what i say incredible well thank you very much for a great episode and um if you're listening and you'd like to learn more then you can go on to relevate.com.au um, if you'd like to be on the show feel free to fill out a contact form or if you have any questions uh, but thank you very much peter it was great having you and uh all the best take care Thanks heaps. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.